Hallelujah. Glory be to God Almighty. You are welcome to the Freedom Life Moment program. My name is Sarah Chisui and I welcome you to this uh, program. We are looking at the second uh, series on the heart and uh, I know that we are going to be blessed in Jesus' name. I invite us to pray as we begin. Heavenly Father, we love you. We give you praise and honor. We exalt your holy name. We thank you for this time. Thank you for your people. Thank you for your word, O King of Glory. We welcome your Spirit of God to grant me utterance, to grant my people uh, uh, understanding even as we listen to your word, O God. May the glory and honor return to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we were looking at the heart and how central it is uh, to the life of man. And uh, we looked at the portion of scripture in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 that was telling us to keep vigilant watch over our hearts because that's where life starts. To keep vigilant watch. You know, vigilant watch is not, any, it's not a sleepy state. It is not an unsober state. It is a state that requires us to be sober, to be watchful. And the scripture is encouraging us, be watchful. Be sober concerning the state of your heart because that is where life starts. That is where whatever you do uh, flows from. And today we are continuing uh, in that line. And, and we, are, we, 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 we the other time talked about uh, what determines the state of a man's heart. What determines whether a man's heart will be good or bad. What determines whether a man's heart will be cheerful, will be wise, you know, will be full of, of wisdom, will be full of understanding. The scripture talks of an, an understanding heart. Uh, Solomon prayed to God and he asked the Lord, give me an understanding heart that I will know, that I will be able to distinguish between good and evil, that I will be able to judge your people, an understanding heart. So we're looking at what determines a man's, the state of a man's heart because it is crucial uh, that we know so that we can keep watch so that we can keep watch and avoid the state that will lead us into, uh, we, that will bring chaos to our lives, the state that will bring sorrow and sadness into our lives, the state that will, will, will bring a turmoil into our lives. And we are continuing in that direction. And we have talked about the power. Uh, one of the things that determines the state of a man's life is the power that controls the heart or the power uh, that controls the soul. And we had talked about one of the powers that controls the heart as the power of self or what the Bible calls the power of a flesh. Yeah, and we had, uh, we had, we had uh, 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 explained the power of self as the willpower, the human power, the power of a man uh, uh, operating by, his, by himself, void of God, void of the influence of the Holy Spirit. Such a man, we said, uh, is bound to hit a snag. Such a man, we said, is bound uh, to meet a situation that overwhelms him. He's bound to reach a place where he cannot go on, where his power cannot carry him, where his wisdom cannot carry him, where you you know, whatever things he trusted uh, cannot, cannot cause him to go through. And at that stage, the man's heart begins to uh, de de descend into a state uh, of, 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 of worry. Uh, he, he begins to, to, to accumulate worry in his heart. He begins to get into a, an anxious state. He begins to become nervous. Uh, the man in that state begins to fear. The man in that state begins, you know, uh, to be frustrated. And with such a state of heart, we said you are bound, uh, that state of heart is bad and you are bound to experience uh, bad things in your life because a frustrated man, a frustrated man will not be able to, 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 to think right, you know. The scripture tells us in the book of uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 that God has not given us a spirit of fear but he has given us a spirit of love, of power and of a sound mind. I love the way the amplified version t says it. It says God has given us a spirit that is calm, that is disciplined and that is well balanced. That is the kind of spirit that we have received are from God. But if your heart is frustrated, if you are in a state of frustration of heart, if you are in, in a state of anxiety, if you are nervous, you cannot have a balanced mind. You cannot exercise discipline. You cannot be calm about anything. And that is why we say that the, the power of self will cause your heart to descend into a state that will, that will, not, um, that will affect your life. Eventually, you will, you will begin to uh, to speak badly to people, you know, you will begin to treat uh, to, to, the, the action and the, and, the, and the words that come from your mouth will begin to deter people from you because we read the portion of scripture uh, in the in the in the book of Matthew uh, chapter twelve and verse uh, uh, chapter eleven and verse fifteen that was saying out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks verse uh, thirty four. 
uh, uh, Matthew 12 and 34, it says, out of the abundance of the mouth, the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, sorry, the, the mouth speaks. So if your heart is full of fear, you will speak fear. If your heart is full of frustration, you will not minister any love to the people around you. And once you don't minister love to the people around you, your life will definitely be affected. Many will run away from you because they don't, they don't enjoy uh, the, the words that you say. You know, Many will avoid you because you know, their life is quenched as they listen to you. Why? That is coming from your heart. Uh, Jesus was speaking to the, to the disciples and he was telling them what comes of the, out of the mouth actually proceeds from the heart. So we are saying that once the power of self is, is, is reigning in your heart, once it is having control uh, over man's heart, the man is bound to descend into a state of of heart that is that is not good into a state of heart that is that will not minister life into a state of heart that will probably bring them to destruction. And we said that, that the power of self reigns in, in the soul, in the unregenerate soul, the soul that has not accepted Christ Jesus as their Lord and Savior. It means that every natural man on earth, every man that has not accepted Christ uh, as their Lord and Savior is operating under the power of self. You are doing things the way you think you should do them. You are doing things within your power. You are doing what your wisdom can can can, can afford to do. You know, you are doing what 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 your, your, your mind can afford to do, you know, and many times that is why as such people are found to be very stressed, you know, even in situations where ordinarily a believer would not be stressed, you'll find an unbeliever stressed, you'll find them fearful, you'll find them, you know, worried, you'll find them, you know, always scared because the, the natural man, the power of self is limited in its operation and this power also operates in believers that are not surrendered to the ruling of the Holy Spirit. You may be a believer, you have the Spirit of God on the side of you, but you are not living a surrendered life. You are not living a yielded life to the, to the, to the control of the Holy Spirit. If that is a state in which you are, you, my brother, are also operating under the power of self. And we said self does not come alone. Self comes along with the power of the enemy. And that's why the portion of scripture in the book of, uh, of, of Romans chapter 8, we look at, it, at the book of Romans. Uh, Romans chapter 8. And verse, and verse 6, it says, we look at verse 5 first. It says, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. And verse 6 says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to, this, to be spiritual, is spiritually minded is life and peace. Hallelujah. Because the carnal man is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. Galatians chapter 5, uh, just to add on to that before we explain it. Galatians chapter 5, uh, we look at a portion of scripture there as well. Hallelujah. Uh, verse, uh, verse 17, it says, For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. And verse 19 goes ahead to show us the works of the flesh, the things that you're capable of doing if the power of the flesh is the one controlling your heart, if the power of the flesh is the one controlling your soul, the kind of things that you're capable of doing. We see that these things are actually have the hand of the enemy behind them. And we said the other time, ladies and gentlemen, that one self is the power that is ruling in your heart. One self is the power that is ruling over your soul. You have given the enemy an open door. You know, you have been given the enemy open access to influence your thoughts, to influence your meditations, to influence your imagination. And the result will be the works of the flesh that we see listed in Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. The Bible says that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So ladies and gentlemen, you can keep watch over your heart and avoid dwelling in the flesh and avoid you know and, and avoid letting you making provision uh, for the flesh the scripture tells us uh, in the book of galatians still where we are, we are reading chapter 5 and verse 24 that those who are christ's you know those who belong to christ those who have believed christ jesus as their lord and savior have crucified the flesh with its pass passions and desires. That is uh, your portion, uh, child of God. If you are Christ's, then the flesh has to be crucified. Because the scripture telling us when Christ was crucified, we were crucified with him. And that's why the man of God, Paul, in the book of Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, he says, I no longer live, I am crucified with Christ. So that should be our state. That should be the state in which we are. That our own desires, our selfish desires, our own passions, our own lusts, 
you know, our own ambitions are crucified with Christ. They remain in a state of death. We do not respond to them. They are crucified. That, that those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. The scripture makes it our responsibility, ladies and gentlemen, to ensure and align ourselves to the life of the spirit and not the life of the flesh. And that's why uh, the, the, script, the portion of scripture in the book of Romans has told us that those who live according, it means that your life will take, a, will, will take either of two, ta- of two turns. You will either live according to the flesh or you will live according to the spirit. And that is your choice to make. You know, you determine uh, the, the portion of scripture also in the book of Romans chapter 13 and verse 14. It says, make no provision, put on Christ and make no provision for the flesh. It is your responsibility. It is your duty. It is you to watch over your heart. It is you to see yourself, you know, this, you know, de- being, you know, going and, and, and being derailed into the flesh and to, and, and to restore yourself. You know, sometimes we, 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 we choose to indulge in the flesh consciously. You know, because sometimes you feel justified to do so. Maybe somebody has annoyed you. Maybe somebody has has done something bad. They have treated you unfairly and you feel that it is your right. You know, you have to express your anger. You have to express, you know, your bitterness. You have to do something to to, to, to revenge and to get justice against this person. And I'm not saying that uh, that uh, getting being angry is, 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 is sin or being angry is a bad thing, you know. But... The, the scripture itself encourages us not to sin even when we are angry, you know. Do not let yourself descend into the flesh. You know, you can, even in that state of, of, of being uh, angry and being treated unfairly, you can choose to put on an attitude of, of spirituality. You can choose to be spiritual even in that state. You can choose to be, you know, you can choose uh, to, to, to take uh, the root of, of, of spirituality even when you feel that it would be your right uh, to, behave in the, to, to behave yourself in the flesh or to indulge uh, in, in the flesh. Hallelujah. So it is our responsibility, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, to avoid making provision to the flesh. Do not make provision to the flesh. And many times our lives end up uh, getting into a catastrophe. Many times we, 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 we end up suffering and getting into problems only because, you know, we, we, we felt justified to indulge in the flesh. We felt maybe someone has felt that God has taken long to answer their prayer. You know, I'm a lady and I've been praying for five years and God has not answered. The man has not come to marry me. And this year I have decided I'm done with God. I will take my own way. Whoever comes, I will go with. I will not wait for God's choice. You know, but the moment you do that, you are choosing. You, you yourself are making provision for the flesh. You yourself are actually, you know, letting the flesh, you know, take control now. As long as you choose, as long as you make a conscious decision, you know, to leave God behind and, and to, to, leave, to leave his way behind and to cease waiting on God and you choose the way of the flesh, uh, you are uh, have opened the door uh, for the interference of the enemy in your life. And you know what else you have done? You have also left everything else that pertains to God behind. Because you, once you have taken God out of the picture, it means that you have, you have also left behind his grace. You know, you will, not need, you, you, will, you will not have a ready supply of the grace of God that you would need. You will not have a ready supply of the wisdom that you would need. Why? Because the spirit that supplies has been left behind. The spirit that would sustain you has been left behind. And that's why we see that many times the, the path of the flesh, the path of, of, uh, of self is, is a tough path, you know. Many times we have to come back running to the Savior because we, we are suffering. We cannot take it anymore, you know. The spiritual supply that is supposed to sustain our lives has been cut off because we have chosen uh, to walk in accordance with the flesh. The scripture in, in Romans chapter 8 has told us that the, the, the flesh is a nemity. You know, it is an enmity against God. You do not expect to get uh, the nourishment of the spirit and the supply of the spirit when you choose to take the way of the flesh. So the scripture encourages us, ladies and gentlemen, to walk according uh, to the spirit. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16 encourages us and says, I walk in the spirit and you will not gratify at the lusts of the flesh. I say then, Paul says, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. That is your conscious a decision, child of God, to walk in the spirit, to choose the way of the spirit. And when you do that, then you have secured your heart, your heart a state that is spiritual. Once the Holy Spirit is guarding and controlling your heart, you can be sure 
uh, that, that life will be supplied because the scripture says that it is the spirit that gives life. It is life that will be supplied to you. It is joy that will be supplied to your heart. It is, it is peace that will be supplied to your heart. You will have secured uh, your, your heart. You, have, you will have secured goodness for your heart. And that's why you will, we shall see uh, this being uh, flowing out of your life. The portion of scripture uh, in the book of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22 talks of the fruit of the spirit. And it says it is joy. It is love. It is peace. It is long suffering. It is kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That is the fruit that we shall see in your life. That is the kind of life that you will carry on. Why? Because the power that is controlling your heart is the power of God. The power that is controlling your heart is what will bring about the fruit, this kind of fruit that we are talking about. You don't expect to be having bitterness. You don't expect to be, hab to, to be harboring unforgiveness. You don't expect it to be harboring anger and then ultimately uh, come up, uh, produce love and produce peace and produce joy. No, the scripture told us where we read in the book of Matthew uh, chapter 12. Uh, it said that uh, a good tree will produce a good fruit, you know, but a bad tree will also produce bad, bad fruit. So if your heart is in a state that is not good, you don't expect to manifest goodness, yeah? So your, your life will now be marked with, 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 with the kind of things that reflect uh, what the state of your heart is. We read a portion of scripture in Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18, which was saying that as a man looks at his face in water, so a man's heart reflects a man's life. You know, so a man's heart will reflect a man's life. So no matter what else you do, we are saying, ladies and gentlemen, that the heart, the state of the heart is central to the kind of life that you will enjoy on this earth. And we are saying the number one thing that you must do for yourself is to accept Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because it is only him that has the power to liberate you from the bondage of self. It is only him that has the power to liberate you from the bondage of the flesh. Because he died. The scripture tells us that he died and when he died, we died with him. And when we die, self no longer has a right over us. It no longer has, a, uh, has the right to control us. The scripture says uh, that sin will no longer have dominion over you because you're in grace you know so Jesus is the one that supplied that grace that liberates us that liberates us from that bondage of self that liberates us from that bondage of the flesh it is him who will bring you to that place where you can now be able to choose and say I will follow the spirit because you have the ability to choose now before you accept Christ Jesus you have you don't have any other option but to operate by the flesh you don't have any other option but to have the enemy intervene in your life time and time and again to have the devil you know interfere with your meditations even when you didn't mean to do what you are doing you find yourself doing it why because you have no control the power that is controlling your heart the power that is controlling your thoughts the power that is controlling your will the power that is controlling your emotions is the power of self and it is the open door for the working of the enemy it is the open door for the working of the power of the enemy and that you cannot control unless you accept Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior it is him that will give you access to the spirit of life and the spirit of life the scripture tells us it is he that liberates us from the law of sin and death Romans chapter 8 and verse 1 and 2 it says there is now there are for now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit for the law of the spirit of life he is the spirit of life ladies and gentlemen we are talking about a life that Jesus came to give us a life that is full of joy a life that is full of peace a life that is full of rest a life that is full of freedom a life that God intended for man and the bible is telling us the law of the spirit of life it is the holy ghost coming into your life that comes along with this law and the bible is saying the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death if you're listening to me my brother and my sister and you are not yet born again the law that is operating in your heart is the law of sin and death it is that compulsion for you to do wrong it is the compulsion for you to go against god even when you would want you would have wanted to do the things that please god you cannot find the strength to do it why because there is a law that you cannot you cannot resist there is a law that you cannot turn against you know you would want to be a nice person and that's why you put on a nice face to you want people to you know, to, to, to perceive you as a nice person, but you your, yourself know the kind of thoughts that you have in your heart. You yourself know the kind of meditations that you have when no one is there, the kind of imaginations that you have when no one is there. You know how deep your heart has fallen. 
away from God and you cannot do anything about it but to pretend. You don't have to pretend. There is a power that can liberate you from the law of sin and death and that power is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And today I'm saying if you are going to liberate your heart, you need to accept uh, the, 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 the prince of life. You need to accept the author of life. You need to accept the prince of peace uh, to liberate you by accepting Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Once the Spirit of God comes into your life, once the Spirit of God takes charge of your life, then your heart will be liberated and you'll begin to go through healing. You know, if you have people you have not forgiven, if you have a bitterness of heart, some people, you know, their, their, their wounds go far from their childhood. They were mistreated. Maybe somebody treated them badly. Maybe they went through bad situations and they are, they are moving around with the pain in their hearts. They are moving around with the bitterness in their hearts. You know, and it keeps coming up. It keeps affecting their spouses. It keeps affecting their children. It keeps affecting their jobs, their performance, you know, because of the state of your heart. Today you can choose to receive liberty uh, in Christ Jesus by accepting him as your Lord and Savior. And once you receive that liberty, it is the beginning of a free heart. It is the beginning of a cheerful heart. It is the beginning of a loving heart. It is the beginning of a wise and understanding heart. And it is the beginning of the perfect life that God uh, intended for you. And if you're a believer and you're out there and you have been living uh, the kind of of life that is that is um, that is hypocritical, hip hypocritical. You know, you you come to church and you pretend, and you know, you pretend that you 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 are with everybody, but really you know that out there you you do your own things. Out there you control your own life. Out there you do things the way you 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 know you 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 see they should be done in your own perspective. You know, my brother, you can you can you can surrender your life to to. To the, to the leading and the control of the Holy Spirit. The scripture encourages us in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18. The scripture encourages us to, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. To come under the control of the Holy Spirit. It is only that state that will liberate you. I know of believers that are struggling in life. I know of believers that you know have not experienced the life uh, that God intended for them. They know no peace and yet they are, they are believers. Some of them have been taken to psychiatric hospitals because they lack peace of mind. They have mental anguish. They they are nervous, they are anxious, they are fearful. Some of them have even started doubting their own salvation. They are not sure either whether, you know, they are born again. They are not sure whether God loves them. Why? Because you, you accepted the Lord, but you chose to take your own way. You accepted the Lord, but you chose to, you know, to, 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 to be in control of your life. And that alone uh, exposes you to the ministration of death, which comes from the enemy. And it cuts you off from the supply of the spiritual nourishment that you'd be receiving uh, from the spirit of the living God. So if you're he listening to me today, and you're such a believer, you have the option of, of, of coming on your knees and just surrendering again to the spirit of the living God and just inviting him and yielding your will and yielding your heart and surrendering and asking him to help you, uh, to lead you and take control of your life. We know, ladies and gentlemen, that there are things that, uh, that, that we... That, 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 that can help us to continue in this surrendered state, things that can help us to continue to be filled and controlled by the spirit of the living God, things like prayer. The scripture tells us that uh, as we pray, you know, we, we edify ourselves, we, we receive strength in the spirit, you know, and as we receive strength in the spirit, of course, the power of the flesh is, is, is put down, you know, you you're not able to be controlled by the flesh when you are strong in spirit. So prayer is vital. You know, you may be a believer and you did not intend to do bad. You did not intend to fornicate. You did not intend to do the things that you are doing. But you just found yourself overcome. You know, you just found yourself, you know, being overcome by another power because you have not been praying, because you are weak in, in spirit. I encourage you to engage in prayer and especially pray and especially prayer in the spirit. Prayer in tongues, the scripture tells us, it will edify you. It will lift you up. It will strengthen you in the spirit and in that state you, you will be able uh, to align uh, to, and to yield, to, to surrender uh, to the leading and the control of the Holy Spirit. Reading the word is very vital studying and meditating on the word because the word is the raw material that the Holy Spirit uses in guiding us, you know. He, the, the scripture tells us that the word of God was inspired of the spirit. As men were writing, they were being inspired of the spirit and the, and the scripture tells us in the book of John chapter 6 and verse 63 these words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. The word of God it is full of the spirit. It is full of the spirit. So as you read it, as you meditate upon it, you will be fed 
your spirit will be fed and it will be energized. It will be boosted, you know. You will, your heart will be filled with the word of God. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 tells us, you know, that your, your, your heart be richly indwelled by the word of God. Because the, the mouth will speak the fullness of the heart. When, when you fill your heart with the word of God, you will speak the word. You will speak life. You will speak. You will minister as the spirit unto men. And they will like your company. They, they, will, they will want to be around you. And your life will not remain the same. We have been talking about the centrality of the heart. The state of your heart determines the state of your life. It doesn't matter how many degrees you have. It doesn't matter how much money you're earning. It doesn't matter how you look. It doesn't matter how smart you are. It doesn't matter how eloquent you are. The state of your heart at the end of the day will determine the state of your life. It will determine whether you'll be happy or not. It will determine whether you'll, you'll be celebrating or not. It will determine at the end of the day whether you'll be depressed or whether you, 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 you'll be living a happy life. Do not neglect your heart. The scripture has told us, keep vigilant watch. Keep vigilant watch. Be sober concerning your heart. Do not allow yourself to slip into the flesh. Do not allow yourself to slip into the, 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 the field of the enemy. But allow the spirit of the living God uh, time and again to reign in your heart. To, re to take control uh, of your mind. To take control of your will. And you will see your life taking another turn. You will see your life you know, taking another turn. The kind of, 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 of uh, direction that, you, that would bring you peace. The kind of direction that would bring you joy. The kind of direction that, you, that would bring you uh, to rest in the name of Jesus. We have been talking about the heart. And I know the spirit of the living God has ministered unto us. I pray and I pray for us, ladies and gentlemen, whoever is listening to, to me. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that God will grace you every day to walk in the spirit. To be intentional about being spiritual in the name of Jesus. May the grace of God increase upon your life. May you be upheld and sustained by the power of God and may your heart be preserved by the power of God in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you so much. Till next time, my name is Sarah Chisubi. Hallelujah. <laughs>